Hey guys, welcome to an exciting video of the all new Grow Base Kit for Raspberry Pi by Siege Studio. In this video, I will do a quick unboxing and a getting started of the Grow Base Kit for Raspberry Pi. So, what is Growth? Prototyping has never been easier ever before. Grow allows you to say goodbye to soldering or using a breadboard for all prototyping needs. You can simply start using our Grow modules just by plug and play. It is now compatible with many development platforms, including Arduino, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, and more. The Grow Base Kit for Raspberry Pi contains a Grow Base Hat and 10 different Grow modules with different interaction modes. Each Grow module comes with clear documentation and demo code to help you get started very quickly and easily. So you can start messing around at once with a wide variety of projects. Now, let's do a quick unboxing of the Grow Base Kit for Raspberry Pi. This entry level kit is very suitable for beginners to learn about coding and electronics with Raspberry Pi in a very fun way. The Grow Base hat that we have included is based on the STM32 MCU which has a 12-bit 8-channel ADC. It has 6 digital, 4 analog, 3 I2C, 1 PWM and 1 UART port. Also it has GPIO pins same as the Raspberry Pi. Now let's connect this Grow Base hat on top of a Raspberry Pi to enable all the Grow interfaces and build exciting projects. Now that we have showed you guys all the hardware, let's move on to setting up all the software to start playing around with this base kit. First, we need to download the Raspbian Stretch from the official website of Raspberry Pi. Make sure to choose the version with desktop and recommended software and download it as a zip file. Wait for some time until the download is finished. Then extract the zip file. Now we need to write this image into an SD card to run on the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and download the Win32 Disk Image software. Then run the installer and follow the install wizard to complete the installation. Then insert a micro SD card into a micro SD card reader and connect to your PC. Go ahead and open the Win32 Disk Image software. Then choose the relevant drive according to the connected micro SD card. Click the folder icon and browse for the downloaded image file and open it. Click right and wait until it is complete. Click OK. Then let's move on to basic configuration. First configure the wireless connection by creating a file named wpasupplicant.conf inside the boot e drive. Open the file using notepad. Then copy and paste the following code. Change the Wi-Fi name and password according to your wireless network. Also, make sure your PC and Raspberry Pi are on the same network. Then, open the boot e-drive again and create another file called SSH inside that drive. Make sure that the file doesn't have any extension. We do this to enable SSH on the Raspberry Pi. Then, eject the microSD card from the computer and insert it into the card slot of the Raspberry Pi. Finally, power up the Raspberry Pi by connecting to a power source. If you guys have a monitor, HDMI cable, mouse and a keyboard, start by connecting the Raspberry Pi to a monitor using an HDMI cable and then connect a mouse and a keyboard to the Raspberry Pi. Then you can move forward in this video to the following time. But if you don't have them, then continue to follow this video. First, we need software to access the Raspberry Pi from a remote computer. There are different ways of doing this. One way is to use an SSH client and use a terminal to access it. Let's set it up first. Download PuTTY SSH client 
by visiting this URL. Then select the Windows installer for 64-bit since we will be using a Windows operating system with that architecture. After that, open the installer and follow the install wizard to complete the installation. Open PuTTY and then set the hostname to raspberrypi.local and the port to 22. Finally, click Open. Log in to the Raspberry Pi by entering the username as Pi and password as Raspberry. Now you have successfully logged in to the Raspberry Pi using the SSH client. Next, let's try to access the Raspberry Pi using VNC Weaver, which is an IDE. Configure the Raspberry Pi to use with the VNC Weaver. Start by typing the following command in the terminal. Go down to Interfacing Options and press Enter to select. Then go down to VNC and press Enter. Choose Yes to enable it. Finally, go down to select Finish and press Enter. Let's move on to downloading the VNC Weaver by visiting this URL. Then select Windows because we will be using a Windows operating system. Make sure EXE 8664 is selected from the drop down menu. Finally, click Download VNC Weaver. Wait a few seconds until the download is finished. Then open the installer and follow the install wizard to complete the installation. Then open VNC Weaver and enter the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. You can find the IP address by typing if config command in the terminal of PuTTY client. Also you can use raspberrypi.local but make sure that only one Raspberry Pi is connected with your LAN. Then enter the IP address of the Raspberry Pi in the text box. Click continue. After that enter username as Pi and password as Raspberry. Now it's time to configure the Grow Base hat. Shut down the Raspberry Pi by entering the following command. Then carefully plug the Grow Base hat into the Raspberry Pi. We need to enable the I2C interface to use the Raspberry Pi with the base hat. So to do that, type the following command in the terminal. Go down to choose interfacing options, then select I2C, choose yes to enable it. Click OK and select finish to save the changes. Afterwards, copy and paste the following command in the terminal to install the Python libraries for all the Grow modules. Wait a few minutes until the libraries are downloaded and installed. If you see this notice, that means you have successfully installed the libraries. Finally, clone the Grow Basekit sketchbook repository which has 8 tutorials inside to get started with this kit. Now that we have showed you guys all the hardware and configured all the software, let's move on to some very interesting tutorials that we have provided to you. First, let's start with the Grove 16x2 LCD, white on blue. We will now connect this module to the I2C port of the base hat. Then open up the PuTTY client and log in to the Raspberry Pi. Then navigate to. Note that we use ls to list the files in a directory and cd to change the directory. Finally, run the code by typing python hello lcd.py. Now you guys can see the output displayed on the screen. If you want to use this module to display other characters, navigate to the tutorial 6 hello lcd directory and edit the .py file by typing nano tutorial 6 hello lcd.py. Then move on to the line where you find the code lcd.write and replace the text inside by what you want it to display. Press Ctrl plus O to write the file and finally Ctrl plus X to exit to the IDE. Then run the code like before. Now let's add another module which is the Grove Temperature and Humidity Sensor DHT11 to display temperature and humidity information on the LCD. Start by connecting this module to D5 port of the base hat. Then open up the terminal and go into the Grove Base Kit sketchbook directory and open Tutorial 7 Environment Reader directory. Then execute the code as follows. As you guys can see, the temperature and humidity information of the surrounding environment is displayed in real time on the terminal and also on the LCD. Let's move on to another tutorial by using the Grove 16x2 LCD white on blue, Grove Moisture Sensor and the Grove Buzzer. Connect the Grove Buzzer to PWM port. 
connect the grow moisture sensor to A0 port. Then open up the terminal and go into the grow basket sketchbook directory and open tutorial H smart garden directory. Then execute the code as follows. Make sure to use sudo at the beginning because you need root access to use the PWM port. You can now see the moisture information displayed on the screen. I will now dip the sensor into the soil of a plant. You can notice that the value is increasing along with the buzzer beeping. Now let's use the grow buzzer to output a melody. Start by connecting this module to the PWM port of the base hat. Then open up the terminal and go into the grow basket sketchbook directory and open tutorial one buzzer directory. Then execute the code as follows. Don't forget to add sudo in the front. Now you guys can hear the buzzer giving a melody. We will now combine this buzzer with the grow red LED button. Connect this module to D5 port of the base hat. Then open up the terminal and go into the grow base kit sketchbook directory and open tutorial 2 LED button directory. Then execute the code as follows. Again, don't forget to add sudo in the front. You guys can see when I press the LED button once, it lights up and buzzer gives a short beep. However, when I long press on the button, it turns off and the buzzer gives a long beep. Let's move on to another tutorial by using the Grove light sensor and the Grove servo. Start by connecting the Grove light sensor to A0 port and Grove servo to PWM port of the base hat. Then open up the terminal and go into the Grove base kit sketchbook directory and open tutorial 3 power of light directory. Then execute the code as follows. Again, don't forget to add sudo at the front because we are using the PWM interface. You guys can see that the rotation of the servo motor is depending on the amount of light falling on the sensor. Moving on to the next tutorial, we will be using the Grove Mini PIR motion sensor and the Grove Relay. Connect the PIR motion sensor to D5 port and the relay to D16 port of the base hat. Then open up the terminal and go into the Grove Base Kit Sketchbook directory and open Tutorial 4 Motion Detection di directory. Then execute the code as follows. You guys can see that when the motion sensor detects a motion, the relay turns on and off. Let's now move on to the final tutorial. Replace the Grove Mini PIR Motion Sensor by the Grove Ultrasonic Ranger. Use the same D5 port for this module like before. Then open up the terminal and go into the Grove Base Kit Sketchbook directory and open Tutorial 5 Proximity Detection directory. Then execute the code as follows. You will notice when someone is getting closer to the Ultrasonic Ranger, the relay turns on and moving away it turns off. If you guys want to play more with the base kit, you can have a look at the wiki page of the base kit by visiting this URL and familiarize with all the modules to start building more advanced projects based on them. We have also included all the software libraries needed to play with all these Grow modules. So guys, that is it for the Grow base kit for Raspberry Pi. If you guys like this video, please give a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to stay updated with all our new product releases and many more interesting videos as well. Thanks for watching.